Welcome to Sew Like a Pro Time. I'm Teresa Sigmund and you are in the right place to learn to choose, alter and make the dance sport, country and skate dress of your dreams. Today I have with me the lovely Carly filming in this amazing space, Overland Park Ballroom in Kansas. One of the fun things that Carly and I had had a good time doing was going through this closet that had about 20 or more dresses hanging in it. Just going, okay, all right, well, let's film this one. Let's film this one. All of us, Amy, Carly and I, the other teacher, Harrison here, were so surprised at how much better this dress looks on her than it did on the hanger. Because I was like, all right, well, the fabric is really interesting, but I don't know about the dress. But one, it fits her beautifully. It was not made for her. It's actually another student trying to sell a bunch of dresses. So this dress is for sale. If you're interested, just go to Overland Park Ballroom, contact them. The link is below. Let me walk through this dress and tell you the interesting features. First of all, it has this very cool flocked mesh, which I love. It looks kind of like an ocean. And so it's very, it's appropriate in my mind that it's in a blue color at least. And then the, the rhinestones, they're little tiny 16s and probably um, aquamarine, just little clusters of them that sort of highlight this flowing ocean. I love this fabric. It's got gorgeous lace detailing, solidly stoned and a lot of varieties of blues. Um, Probably capri blue, some cobalts, um, maybe more aquamarines, the classic aurora borealis. So it's high, I mean, it's a high impact between a whole lot of shine and just moderate amount of shine, and then two different kinds of texture, but not so much texture that you don't know what to look at on the dress. So this is actually a well-designed dress. There is a lot going on with this slightly asymmetrical necklace, a cutout, if you did not want as much cleavage showing as Carly has, you could always ask your dressmaker, or if you do your own sewing, if you've taken my classes and you do your own sewing, just take this mesh and make it a little bit higher. I do like this slight curve. Now this is happening by default. It's not that the dressmaker necessarily tried to do it because it's actually a straight line, but it curves because the body curves and so I like it. It's gentle as opposed to being a chopped off straight line. The asymmetrical aspect here is good. It's very lengthening. Carly's 5'7 or 1.72 meters roughly. So she doesn't necessarily need the height but it would be great on my size and who doesn't really want to look taller, right? Unless I guess you're really tall. So this is always good. If you've been following me a while, you know that I like asymmetrical necklines because they do draw the eye. They give the eye something to look at without it being overwhelming. And so literally your eye, the viewer's eye, just sort of wanders from up here and goes, oh, there's all this stuff here. And then it keeps going down over here to this nice little slit in the skirt. Actually, if you would, I'm gonna step out of the way, spin. This is a great skirt. I would love this for, well, this is a Latin or a rhythm dress, but I would also like this skirt a lot for an ice dance skirt. It's got beautiful movement. It's a good length for a variety of style of dance and skate. Three quarter length sleeves, I like, they're pretty fun. The sleeves are a little baggy here. I would take them in if I were buying this dress. So if you're, you know, if you do your own alterations, I would definitely take it in. If you don't know how to sew, leave it. It's perfectly fine. It's not the end of the world. I love that whoever the seamstress is set this in with no seam over the shoulder. I do teach you in my sewing school how to do this with no seam because the sleeves look better and fit better when you don't have that seam. Keep going, please, ma'am. Okay, on the back view, we've got the asymmetrical line continues. Um, it is a little odd in my mind that there's just this little bit of lace right here. I would, I would have, as a designer, have continued this up at least part of the way, if not all the way up into this point. So is it a super big deal? No, it's just a design preference. And there are so many designers in the world and that's why, because we would all do things differently. Um, these little fringes here are all the way around the front. They're kind of fun. They are probably ribbon, just like a real skinny ribbon with 16 SS solid on both front and back. So it's makeshift beads basically 
which makes this really suitable for skating without having the hazard of using beaded fringe. So you get the look and the movement of beaded fringe with not having to worry about the beads breaking and falling off. Same thing for dancing, because it's really dangerous with beaded fringe when the threads break and beads go everywhere. It's, it's a big hazard. One thing I want to touch on on this dress is the construction. It's pretty interesting. It looks like a skirt yoke, right? It looks like the skirt is attached right here. It's not. Which, if you're doing a skate dress, you would want to have that happen. Um, this skirt actually is kind of a skirt yoke in that it's attached to the leotard way up here. But this little flocked mesh just goes over it like a little overdress. It's kind of clever, but why? I've been thinking about that. <laughs> why do it? What are the advantages of doing it? And honestly, I don't really know. <laughs> I've been trying to think of something profound and I can't. I really have no idea why they did it. It just seems like an extra step. I don't, I don't understand, but, it, but it's, it's interesting. The downside of it is that this could ride up. So you would, as a skate dress, you would absolutely not want to do this, especially if you're doing ice dance or pair skating or anything where the partner grabs you, because they're gonna just pull this layer up, get their hand caught in, it's gonna be a problem. You also would not want to wear this for theater arts in the ballroom world for the same reason. So why it's like this? Not a clue, <laughs> but it looks awesome when it's down like this. So that is it. Carly has more dresses to put on. <laughs> all right, so if you have enjoyed today's video, please share it with all of your dancing, skating, sewing friends. Go to sewlikeapro.com, leave me your name and email address, and I'll make sure you always get my newsletters and find out information about when Sew Like a Pro enrollment is happening. Thanks to Carly for being here and thanks to Amy Castro for letting me come in and film in her gorgeous studio, Overland Park Ballroom. I will talk to you again another time.